Free Golden Birds for War Thunder. Inspect the app in the description below. Hello everybody and welcome once again to some more War Thunder gameplay. Yes. Now are you fighting a ghastly war? Do you require the ability to zoom into enemy territory at treetop level to blow up something that looks German? Well now you can as this gentleman is the de Havilland Mosquito Fighter Bomber. It's fast, it's agile and sexy. Basically, it's a roaring good plane. And if my flawless Sean Connery impression can't persuade you, maybe this gameplay will. Soon you'll see how brilliant the Mosquito really was. I mean, during the war, this is the kite that really put the wind up Goering's trousers. Yes, and well, much like a pair of Goering's rather Rubenesque trousers, the Mosquito could cover and span over half of Europe and back on one single flight because it was very well designed out of very light materials. Yes, well that and the 700 gallons of highly flammable fuel stuffed into the wings. But I don't think that has too much to do with it between you and me. No, now what's that over there? By God, it's a German port. Can you believe it? Right, uh, goggles on, chocks away, and tally-ho. Let's dive in towards them and begin our attack run. Yes sir, here we go. Now, there is a grand master plan. We're gonna come in and ride the waves into the port like a boat. We're gonna duck below the hills and avoid the German radar. It's a fact that German radar doesn't work in Norway. Too many hills and fjords and Viking longships doesn't work. Absolutely useless. Uh, that and we're using camouflage. Yes, we're gonna be very hard to spot as we come cruising into port at 300 miles an hour, they won't have a chance. It would be like trying to find a single piece of hay in a giant flying stack of large needles. Yes, now we're coming in very low and very fast, as is the Mosquito Way. Remember, you're only too low when you've crashed. Right, uh, brace yourself, Nigel. This is gonna be a bit of a rough one. Uh, here we go, attacking now. Bandits, 12 o'clock, fire! Yes, yes, bloody hell, yes, yes. Yes, look at them explode, my god! Now, you might think that that's a bit unrealistic. I mean, did anti-aircraft positions really go up like a drunk dragon at a petrol station? I mean, really. It's like the Germans douse their positions with gasoline before going on duty. Uh, well, to find out if this is accurate, we need to watch some entirely 100% historical documentary based video evidence of this kind of thing happening in real life. That's right, it's the 1964 fictional film production, 633 Squadron. Now watch closely. Kablam! Well, there you go. I think that's pretty conclusive if you ask me. Now, you can't get much harder evidence than that, can you? My god. Did you see those Germans? Blown to smithereens. Yeah, and that was basically a documentary. Basically. Yeah, it basically was. Uh, now, let's fly in this direction, shall we? As that's where most of the aerial combat is taking place. Dare I say it. And, uh, well, we are moving there at a considerable pace of 230 miles an hour. Yes, well, we're fast, aren't we? We're very fast, because the Mosquito is made out of wood. Yes, and not just any old wood. Ply and balsa wood. Yes, solid British trees. Well, imported solid British trees. Yes, there's nothing stronger. None of your German full metal precise factory finished rubbish here. No, thank you, my laddo. Just good old British handcrafted wood assembled and furnished by elite squads of furniture makers across the United Kingdom. Yes, there's nothing quite like an aeroplane made out of wood. No, sir. No, I mean, the very first thing that comes to mind when I look at a tree is... Yes. Yes. That's a born flyer. Bill, put an engine on it and prepare for the flight of your life. Yes. Now, I do apologize, good viewers, uh, but I'm afraid the Germans have arrived in their Mischersmith 410. And that aircraft has got more guns than sense. It's hardly sporting. It sports massive amounts of guns 
and, uh, well, it's very unpleasant. So we shall fly over here in a very speedy fashion. That would be an astounding career move right about now. Uh, the key is, remain incognito and out of sight, which the Kriegsmarine are making fairly difficult with their intense flak fire. Yeah, well, uh, we'll move a bit over to the right. That'll throw their gunnery crews off the scent. Yes, sir. You see, now they're missing. Yes. Now, our team has been, and there's no better word for it, uh, utterly rogered. And so, uh, well, it's basically us left. We are the hero of the tale. And, uh, well, there's another Mr. Smith 410 coming straight towards us, so we better act quickly with a sharp dive and some sharp cannon fire. Aha! And, oh, he's pulling some spicy footwork in retaliation, and we're missing. We're still missing. Fire! Yes, good hits there. And he's, well, he's flown away is what he's done there. Yeah, I won't get too technical with you, but what he's done is he's flown around us, hasn't he? He's now going up into the vertical. We shall chase him. Here we go. Yes. You see, his fatal error here is that he's flying a plane that's made out of metal. Heavy, heavy metal. Uh, and alongside that, he's got backwards-facing machine guns and vast amounts of sausage in his aircraft. And here we go. Yes. Four 20mm Hispano cannons and 303 guns destroyed him in an instant, unsurprisingly. Yes. Uh, now there's a second 410. It's come back. Now this one is much faster than we are. It's also a lot higher and so has a higher energy advantage. So, uh, what do we do here? Well, I think we open up with the old play the victim ploy. Yes. We'll fly low and turn tightly, keeping our speed incredibly low and so we'll seem like a juicy target when in reality, we're not, because we're made out of wood, and that is solid. And, uh, well, now we've put phase two of the plan into action, quite simply. We fly over here for a bit and lure him into a false sense of security by making him think we're running away, when in reality, we're coming back for him. Yes, sir, we are. We're turning in hard to the right, narrowly missing the hills, never mind, and forcing her head on. Here we go. And put up your jukes, buster. Here we go. Yes, there we go. Yes. And now... Well, now we bugger off back to Blighty. Yes. So whilst we're retreating, I mean tactically withdrawing from the battlefield, I bet you're wondering, good people, why on earth was the mosquito made out of wood and not metal? Ah, well, uh, if you're wanting the gods' honest truth, it's because the RAF needed something light and fast. Uh, and secondly, and somewhat unbelievably, the British metal industry was having a bit of a tough time in the 40s, to be honest. Something to do with some war with Germany. Yeah, essentially, we had bugger all metal. And uh, the Germans, well, the Germans had a lot of metal because they captured Norway, which gave them easy access to vast amounts of Scandinavian ore. And, uh, well, we, well, we built a lot of ships with our metal, a lot of them. And ships aren't exactly known for their stable flight characteristics, are they? See HMS Hood reference, which sunk rather rapidly. And, well, since Britain is basically a giant forest, and it is, I mean, it's literally 97% trees and then 3% bus lanes, uh, the solution was obvious. Use Britain's most available assets. So, I suppose, the question was whether to deliver bombs to the enemy via an elite squad of London buses backed up with a precise timetable, or construct a new aeroplane out of wood that could carry bombs that way. In the end, the Ministry of War went for the new plane idea over uh, my preferred option of the war buses, and thus the Mosquito was born. Now, naturally, being made out of wood, the thing went like a stabbed rat. So, what you had was a plane that could zoom into enemy territory, bomb something that looked remotely German, and then bugger off back to Blighty for tier medals, all whilst outrunning Harry Hahn's precious fighters. Speaking of which, a uh, bit of bad news on that front, I'm afraid, viewers. It appears Ballet Jerry has caught up with us. And, uh, well, there's not a lot we can do about it, I'm afraid, because they're faster, higher, and we're running low on the old ammunition. So, I'm afraid, it's a suicidal charge uphill towards the enemy. Yes! Here we go! Attack! 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 Fix bayonets! Here we go! Fire the guns! Hoot! Splat! Charge! Ah, oh dear! Oh no! No, that's not gone well. Oh god. Uh, as you can see, the uh, the ply and balsa wood came off a little bit worse than the uh, full metal German Mischersmith. Uh, luckily for us, it is of course buoyant, so our crew should have no problem surviving in the harsh Norwegian... Oh. Oh no. Oh dear. So, according to so-called Gaijin.net, 
ply and balsa wood are not buoyant. They don't float. Yeah, well, I bet if you chop down a Russian tree, you could sail it through the black bloody sea! Anyway, on to the results. We have a few air kills today and some ground units destroyed, but we lost, so bugger it. Uh, I sincerely hope you enjoyed today's video. It was basically a recreation of the film 633 Squadron. It wasn't even deliberate, it just turned out a lot like the film. Uh, yes. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please just press a like via Carrier Pigeon, and I'll see you next time. Uh, I'd also like to thank a chap by the name of Ronnie, one of my various Patreon pledges for supporting my wonderful work as always, and, uh, well, cheerio!